few hours. In a few hours. In a few hours from now. You know, these are symptoms. Uh, and we're having a conversation about the symptoms. But are we really having a conversation about the cause itself? Well, we're, we're, I think, you know, if one listens to the analysis that, I mean, I suppose Steve Schwarzman and Scaramucci were the two key um, proponents of the, the new Trump regime, if you like, because there were no Trump transition team people here, although Schwarzman is, is running his, one of his economic committees. Andrew Liveris was here, is running the manufacturing thing, and Scaramucci is on his team. But if you listen to, for example, what Schwarzman says about uh, the, the president-elect and going to be president focusing on economic growth mm -hmm. uh, and jobs, mm -hmm. That probably, and I would agree, I mean, he looks at the Obama administration and sees 1.8% compound growth rate in GDP. That's not enough. I mean, it's, it's, it's infinitesimally small in relation to what India is achieving, for example, and it shows in our numbers and everybody else's numbers. Um, so when you think about that, that will create jobs, mm -hmm. employment, and that's the key issue. We, we all know that if we get economic growth, same thing is true for India. You get more jobs, uh, people are happy. Now, the technological hmm. risk or effect is, in fact, we, people here argue about whether technology creates more jobs than, uh, than it destroys. And hmm. my view is it's a net destroyer of jobs. So that issue, so domestically in the U.S., hmm. maybe Trump is a good thing. But what is giving investors confidence about the U.S. story? Is it the fact that... Tax rates have, down, yes, repatriation of profits... Yes, but is it the fact that you have Bill Barros as Commerce Secretary, uh, you know, you have people who understand business, who have been proponents of free trade and globalization. So, you know, one argument is that the U.S. is not headed into being an isolationist, that it's not necessarily going to be anti-free trade. It's just going to want to do well, more bilateral deals. Net, 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 I think uh, <laughs> Trump is positive, clear positive for the US domestic economy the question is what's going to happen internationally that is totally unpredictable hmm. we're in the, the uh, Al so Gore has been a completely different foreign well, policy discussion here Davos well, wait a minute. Alan Gore, Al Gore made the distinction between risk and uncertainty uh, risk being something that you could sort of manage because you knew it. uncertainty is about black swans we're, we're in the uncertain area on foreign policy mm -hmm. for the US so so you've got this counterbalance. So best way of putting it, your gain on the U.S. swings, I think, in the short term, I think two or three years' time we'll have an inflationary sort of Keynesian deficit-driven boom in the U.S. I mean, it lasts for two, certainly lasts for two or three years. And then uh, internationally, it's much more unpredictable. Mexico, mm. I mean, it, Mexico... Well, Russian relationships. I mean, yeah. the Russian economy domestically is not doing too badly, mm -hmm. right? For foreign firms in Russia, like ourselves and our clients, it's not, not that easy. Uh, Chinese relationships, mm -hmm. you know, the, we had the president of China here in mm -hmm. Davos. That's the second big thing, you know, it's the G2 world, but mm -hmm. China is filling the vacuum that the Obama administration has left. And is it really? Yes. Yeah, because, you know, we've had, we've had the Chinese penetrating Africa and Latin America, uh, whilst the West has been focused on Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq. I'm not saying that's wrong, or in the Middle East. Uh, I heard that the uh, president, I don't know if this is true or not, but has, has signed 40 free trade agreements mm -hmm. in Latin America in the last few weeks, the president of China. So I, I, I think uh, the Chinese are taking advantage uh, of uh, America's withdrawal under Obama and the sort of things that have come out, the tweets that have come out, uh, and the statements, the pre-administration statements. Now, you've got a very strong Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson from ExxonMobil, uh, you know, CEO of an extremely powerful yeah. company, a, a mad in the Middle East. I mean, from what I hear, mm. uh, Middle Eastern regimes like him and respect him. The Russians do too. Mm -hmm. You receive that award from the, the Russians. So you, you, you've got sort of a difference there. You've already got Mattis... Mm opining on Russian relationships and NATO, and there's some differences. So it's going to be very interesting as to how it pans out. Uh, uh, is, but unpredictable. Is the world ready for Twitter diplomacy? Well, uh, you know, there is the debate here. Some people here believe, that, you know, times have changed, that you and I are, are old farts in the sense that, <laughs> that we, we look at things through traditional eyes, and maybe Twitter diplomacy works. I mean, at short attention spans... Mm. It 140 seems to, characters to, yeah, 142 works. characters <laughs> seems to seems to work. So mm. it certainly wins campaigns. But whether that's the reality, some people believe that's a style that will will work. Maybe the pace of things is so great. Now we had a wonderful session with Tom Friedman here um, on his new book that he's just put out, and he was talking about the three big shifts: uh, technology, globalization, 
uh, and climate change and what impact that has had. Uh, he has certain firm views uh, and he's expressed them, but it was a fascinating hour. And what makes Davos actually really worthwhile because it makes you really mm. think about about these things uh, and the world is being turned upside down particularly for people who run legacy businesses uh, and for those people who are starting up businesses mm. and for countries too and the way that countries are governed. We started Davos actually on uh, Tuesday morning with a session we've done a survey of 250 communications professionals in 40 countries, for governments, about what they were doing uh, in terms of communications and what they were not doing. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Modi is a wonderful communicator. He's, he's at the top of the tree, along with people like Macri, uh, in terms of turning a country around psychologically, mm -hmm. uh, communicating, and in, Mac in Modi's case, delivering. I mean, our business in India last year went through six, $600 million of revenue, and I think this year, uh, we're in, even in our budgets, we're approaching $700 million. So I'm... Has demonetization impacted your business? Um, actually, the answer to that is no. I mean, a little bit of a, a stutter, but, but relatively no. I mean, if I, we were doing as well in the rest of the world as we are in India, uh, I, I've said this before, I could retire. Everybody would cheer when I was <laughs> going off uh, and sitting on some beach or on top of some mountain somewhere. <laughs> But what about uh, what's happening in the UK now that... Um, Brexit. Well, that's yes. the third thing here. You know, you've got Trump, you've got China, uh, China and you've got Brexit. Um, uh, Theresa May was here, Philip Hammond's here. We had a British business lunch and the Chancellor did an excellent job. I, I, we didn't, it, there was a clash on timing, unfortunately, but the two speeches that the Prime Minister mm. here made here, I think, were well received. And she seems to have made a good impression. She's seen a lot of people while she was here mm. and uh, she's made a very good impression. So how are you preparing yourself for a post-Brexit era? Well, for us, it, it's difficult because four of our top ten markets, uh, uh, Germany is number, number four, uh, France is number six, uh, Italy is number nine, Spain is number ten. So I have no choice. We have four of our top ten markets are in those countries. They're key EU markets. And EU itself is an important uh, market for us, if you like. So we've uh, paradoxically, or counter to what you might think, mm. we've actually increased our activity in the EU. I mean, it's the reverse effect. At the same time, because of these bilateral opportunities that the UK will have post-Brexit, you know, if we are going to become a new Singapore, low tax rates, you know, uh, a, a, a competitive environment. Uh, and, and by the way, our country survey, right, where we do, we, we surveyed 60 countries last year, where, and UK came third. I can give you a sneak preview mm -hmm. of... Uh, 2017, the UK will be third again, but with improved ratings, interestingly. Mm -hmm. There'll be a change at the top. Germany was top last year. I won't 